In this lesson, we're going to solve proportional relationships. Um, and I want to go back to our essential question, which is how can you show that two quantities are proportional? Um, in lesson 1.4, we looked at tables as a way of determining if there was a constant rate or constant ratio. In lesson five, we looked at using graphs to determine if something was proportional. And we found out that if the graph passed through the origin and it was a straight line, then it was a proportional relationship. So in this lesson, we're going to try to answer that same essential question using a different method. Okay. So I'm going to start off with this fraction here, 6 eighths equals 3 fourths. Now, you might be able to look at that and go, oh yeah, I totally can see that those two fractions, those two ratios, rates are equivalent. But let's kind of go through a process called cross products to determine that really 6 eighths is equivalent to 20 or to 3 over 4. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the product of 6 times 4. And because I have that equal sign there, I have to say that that is going to be equal to this cross product of eight times three. Well, six times four is 24. Eight times three is also 24. So I can say that those two ratios are equivalent. So I am using this idea of cross products to determine whether or not something is proportional. Let's take a look at an example. I'm on page 56 of your textbook, so feel free to follow along in your book um, or just kind of watch and record um, in your notebook what I'm doing here. <clears throat> so the problem says after two hours, the temperature had risen seven degrees Fahrenheit. Now what I need to do is I need to write and solve. So I've got two things to do. I've got to write the proportion and then I've got to solve it uh, to find the amount of time, <clears throat> excuse me, it will take at this rate for the temperature to rise an additional 13 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So I'm going to start off with what I know. I know that the temperature has risen seven degrees in two hours. Okay, so I can write that as this rate. Now what I want to do is I want to make this equivalent to another ratio. Okay, and I'm going to take the information that I know in here. Okay, so I've already, I've already figured out where to put my uh, temperature. I figured out where to put the hours in the first ratio. But now I've got to deal with this part. Okay. Since I have temperature, which I mean, can just label it. Okay, so I have temperature in the numerator and I have time in the denominator. Now I know the temperature that I am looking for. I want to know what's going to happen, how much time has passed for it to increase by an additional 13 degrees. So I can put that there. Now I have an unknown, I have some quantity that I don't know what it is, and it's this amount of time. I don't know how much time is it's going to take for it to increase by an additional 13 degrees, but I'm going to use this idea of cross products to help figure it out. Okay. All right. So here's my first cross product. I'm going to multiply, oopsie, sorry. I'm going to multiply seven times t. Well, 7 times t is simply 7t. Then I'm going to multiply, let's see what color I need, purple. Now I'm going to multiply my other cross products, 2 times 13, and I'm going to get 
26. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what I have to figure out is what number t is when I multiply it by 7 to get 26. So it's 7 times something equals 26. Well, what I want to do is I want to use the inverse operation. Instead of trying to just randomly guess what numbers would go there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Let's see what color should I use. I'm going to divide both sides by 7. <clears throat> because if I divide 7t divided by 7, well, 7 divided by 7 is just going to be one whole. So I'm going to be left with t. And t is going to equal some number. And it's going to be 26 divided by 7. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and write it all out and see what I can come up with. <clears throat> I may have to do some rounding, so I'll kind of take you through that process. I don't know if I'll have to, but we'll see. 7 goes into 20 and goes into 2, 0 times, but it goes into 26 3 times. 3 times 7 is 21. I can subtract 21 from 26. I can add a 0. I'm going to drop down that 0. 7 goes into 56. Let's see, 7 times 7 is 49. And I can bring down another 0. And I can say 7 goes into 10 one time. Now, since I'm talking about time, I might just stop there. And I'm going to look at this digit here and it's gonna determine what I'm gonna do with that seven, okay? Since this number is less than five, I am going to stay with 3.7. So my answer is 3.7 hours. There we go. Now I want you to try a few on your own. So now it's your turn to solve some of these uh, on your own. Um, check with a partner to make sure that you're on the right track. Um, you can pause the video here, give you some time to think about it. Um, I'm gonna have solutions to this. Uh, if you don't wanna see my solutions, but you wanna uh, share your thinking with uh, the class, totally fine. Um, you could use my solutions as a way of kind of seeing how you are progressing. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and I'll solve these three just so that you have um, a record of how to solve them. Um, you can see my solution, my strategy. You can hear me talk about how I solve problems. Uh, so let's do this. All right. So just so I can leave my problem there alone, I'm just going to rewrite it as x over 4 equals 9 over 10. Um, I'm going to use this idea of cross products. I'm going to say x times 10. That's going to give me 10x equals 4 times 9, and 4 times 9 is 36. Now what I have to do to figure out what x is, is I need to divide both sides by 10. So if I divide 10x by 10, I'm going to just get x and 36 divided by 10, well, let's see, if I just do that here, 10 goes into 36, 3 times 30, bring down a 6, if I bring down a 0 there, I've got 10 goes into 60, 6 times, boom, now I'm done. <clears throat> so x is equal to 3.6. Let's look at B. Once again, I'm going to rewrite it. 
3 over 24 equals 5 over y. Cross products. 3 times y, that's just going to be 3y. That's going to equal 24 times 5. Well, 20 times 5 is 100, plus 4 times 5 is 20, so that should be 120. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. This is going to just give me 3y divided by 3. I'm just going to end up with y. I want to find out how many times 3 goes into 120. So I'll just do that here. 3 goes into 12 4 times. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 12 is 0. Now I still have this other 0, so I have to still deal with it. I can't just say, okay, 3 goes into 124 times. I've got to keep going. So I'm going to ask myself how many times does 3 go into 0? Well, that's 0 times. 0 times 3 is 0. And so I wind up with y equals 40. Now let me do the last one here. 7 thirds, or 7 over 3, equals n over 21. <clears throat> now, before I even solve this, I just want to look at my fraction so far. I have a fraction that is larger than one whole. I have an improper fraction. If these are going to be equal, then this, whatever number n is representing, has to be a number larger than 21 because this fraction also has to be an improper fraction. So let's see if that's true. Okay, so I'm gonna go seven times 21. Uh, seven times 20 is 140 plus seven times one is seven. So I have 147 equals three times n, so I get three n. Now, in the previous problems, my variable was on the left side of the equal sign. It does not matter, okay? Since I'm multiplying n times 3, I want to divide it by 3. So now I'm going to get... I'm going to say n equals... And I'm just going to write it the opposite way that the other ones are written, just because that's where my variable is. It's on the right-hand side, but it's still going to be the same thing. All right, so now i got to figure out how many times does 3 go into 147. 3 goes into 14 four times. 4 times 3 is 12. 14 minus 2, or 12 is 2. Bring down a 7. 3 goes into 27, 9 times, 9 times 3 is 27, I'm left with nothing, so now I have 49 equals n, or I could just say n equals 49. Both of them are correct. So, now that you've had a chance to practice on your own, you've checked your work with your peers, perhaps you've shared out with the class, um, I want you, not on that page, for classwork, depending on how much time you have, um, slash homework, I want you to work on page 59, questions one, two, three, four, and five. So we're just practicing this idea of cross products. Um, and I know you know this, but I just want to point it out. Take pictures of your solutions and show your work. Attach the pictures to your assignment and then turn it in on Google Classroom. And I will see you shortly.